If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. Welcome to Learn Locust series. In this season 2 episode 4, we are going to see about how you can do correlation in Locust. Correlation is very critical topic and it's very easy to understand. Without correlation, you will not be able to complete your end-to-end -end business flow in any tool. I have already put up multiple videos about correlation. You can check it out in uh, Jmeter playlist or load on our playlist. So correlation is nothing but capturing the dynamic values from the response. Whenever you send a request to the server, often server will throw some gibberish data. Only machine can understand. When it comes to correlation, you have to identify the right value to be captured and you have to pass those captured value in your subsequent request. A typical example would be a session ID, or some order number or time in milliseconds or some random data. Often these data will be generated from the server side. Sometimes it could be from the client side. If it is from the client side, you can uh, re-engineer the uh, logic how the data is getting generated and then you can implement in your tool. But from the server side, only way is you have to capture it. We are going to see with an example. Assume that uh, you have an application and you are trying to log in. So this is your first request. So this particular uh, phase is happening You are whenever you are trying to record or capture your HTTP request from the developer tools. First you are sending a request, say login slash token and the app is giving back with a random token. So this token is valid only for a couple of minutes. After that, it will expire. In the next request, you are going to redeem some points by passing the token. And server will give back the 200 status OK because the session is valid, token is valid, so everyone is happy. Now you have captured this particular requests and response and your script is ready and you are going to replay it. And whenever you replay, first request is you are going to send a login slash token. But this time app is giving you a new token because that is the uh, purpose of the app. So whenever you ask for a token, app will give you the new token. But in your replay code, you still have the old token. And when you send this token, server will not respond. It will throw the error because server is expecting a new token ID, the valid token, but the already the token which you are sending already expired. So in this case, how you can handle this particular scenario? That is where correlation comes into picture. So correlation is nothing but capturing the values and storing it in a variable. So here again, we are sending a token, login slash token to the app and the app is giving back a new token ID. So this token, we are going to save it in a variable say login underscore token. In the request to, we are going to send the variable which has the current value, the current token. This time app is happy because that is the valid token the app is expecting. So the, you are getting the 200 status okay. Otherwise it will throw the error. So there are multiple logics you can implement. Uh, in the commercial tools, we have the automatic correlation. You can uh, create some rules uh, and then uh, when you replay, it will automatically applied and then you can uh, save your rules. You can share it with your teammates. So there are a lot of features when it comes to commercial, but in Locust, uh, we are kind of limited, but you can leverage the third party libraries and also the built in uh, modules. So in Locust, there are multiple ways you can do correlation. Common way is using the regular expression. So you can write your own uh, regular expression to capture the groups or you can leverage the uh, third party parsers like HTML parser, JSON parser or XML parser. So there are a lot of parsers available. You can leverage those. Now we will see a quick demo how you can uh, do the correlation in Locust. So before uh, we see about how you can do correlation in Locust, I'm going to leverage the petstore.octoperf.com to demonstrate the correlation concept. So this is the home page of PetStore and I have just launched the network tab. Whenever you right click, uh, you can go to developer tools and uh, click on inspect. You will get this uh, pane and here uh, we are going to record the network log. Now I'm going to click on enter the store link and whenever I click on the enter the store, it is automatically uh, capturing the requests and you can see uh, your uh, requests 
details and also the response details and whenever you just uh, scroll down you can see uh, there are uh, a random data from the server for example uh, in the header section under the cookies we have the json id and similarly in the response also uh, if you just uh, parse it you can see the uh, some random value like uh, source page and also some uh, underscore underscore fp and uh, of course there will be multiple uh, dynamic data so every time it will be unique so when it comes to pet store there are a couple of places you may need to correlate one is uh, json id that is must and also if you observe the line number 48 here so this also could be correlated but without correlation also this will work but for the practice uh, you can try how you can correlate the uh, source page and also the underscore underscore uh, fp so these two things could be correlated but in this demo we are going to see how we can uh, correlate the json id because that is kind of very common across the applications now let me launch pycharm so this is my simple pet store locust file in this locust file i have multiple tasks so here I am going to leverage the sequential task set so that it will execute sequentially. And the very first task is home page load. And then second task is uh, entering the store. And third one is uh, sign on uh, page load. And fourth one is uh, login. And fifth one is we are going to load the random product page. And finally, we are going to sign out. This could be overwhelming, but it's a very simple script. Uh, nothing fancy here. Only important thing is you should know how you can capture the dynamic responses so to capture the dynamic response uh, i am going to leverage uh, random so that is the uh, one built-in uh, module and we are going to leverage the regular expression so random is kind of optional but i am trying to load the random product page by leveraging the random module so nothing fancy here and first let us see in which request we are going to capture the response so in the home page there is no session id is getting generated but once you click on the enter the store link there is a new session is getting generated this particular knowledge you will be getting once you start capturing your requests in the developer tools so otherwise it is very tough there is no other way you have to scan your each request manually but once you gain some knowledge about your application it is like a cakewalk it will take a couple of hours for the initial effort but once you are comfortable it is uh, very easy so in this particular task i am going to search for j session id and i have written some uh, regular expression so this re this is the built-in module regular expression and it will search for this particular pattern and then it will uh, store the value so here uh, the group means the first capture uh, group so always looks for the first capturing group and then i'm going to save this into a variable so here you can see the keyword called self.json so where is this coming up so if we go to the top so here i am going to uh, initialize class using the init method and here line number nine states that super keyword so super keyword means we are going to inherit from the sequential task set we are going to inherit all the properties to understand about super you can just google there are a lot of tutorials available uh, for python so that you can understand how the inheritance works and uh, this particular keyword uh, will help you to derive the all the properties and methods of the uh, parent class and here i am going to create a new variable called self.json and self.randomproduct so whenever this particular uh, object is getting initialized so these values will be empty so this particular variable you can use it anywhere in your task so that is the purpose so here you can capture and here you can use basically anywhere you can use these variables so whenever you want to share between the tasks some variable you can just initialize here and you can uh, reuse it anywhere in your task so that is the purpose and here I'm going to store the value and in the subsequent request sign on page I'm going to reuse it so this session ID will be always random uh, we cannot predict anything and whatever it is generated it will be captured and then it will be passed in the subsequent requests 
Similarly, I have done another capturing in the uh, login page. So in the login page, what I have done is uh, I have captured all the product types and then uh, using the random module, I have, I'm just selecting the random product. So here I'm capturing using the find all and uh, in this particular request, I'm uh, sending the product name and also in the uh, URL. So now if I run this particular uh, script for about 20 seconds, you can see for each request and how uh, the request has been named. So for example, random product means it will go randomly, either dogs, cats, fish, reptiles, etc. So I'm not predicting anything. The Python code will take care. It randomly picks up the values and then it will just uh, display it in the uh, transactions. So as you see here, we have uh, around uh, one, two, three, six transactions. Uh, home page, enter the store, sign in page, load, sign in page and birds. So two times it picked up uh, birds. So now let us uh, run with uh, say uh, run again. Uh, you will see uh, some more products gets picked up. So now you can see there are multiple uh, products has been loaded. Birds, cats, reptiles. So this is how it works. The core thing is uh, make sure you know where to capture and what kind of regular expression you are going to use. So those are the two things. Once you have identified the steps, rest everything is easy. Just uh, you're going to replace it in the subsequent request and you're going to validate it. So thanks for watching and have a good day. If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel.